I'm Tommy Evans from Droids Recording Studio, and in this one, Devin is going to show you how to make your mixes feel like they're just ah, kicking you in the chest by making your own bass drops after the intro. Droids Recording Studio is two people, Tommy Evans, that's me, and Devin Schmid. We are audio engineers that specialize in heavy music and we make videos about the mixing and recording process of that. If this is something that you're into, or if it's something that you want to learn more about, that's awesome. Thank you. Hit the subscribe button, tap that little bell icon so that you are the first to know whenever we post anything new. Now, despite what you may think or what you may have heard, I still think bass drops are some of the coolest things ever. They are the quickest way to make a part just pop and hit that much harder. Plus, imagine this, you've got a band in the studio with you and they start talking about bass drops and stuff and you can show them that you know how to make one right here, right now and it's done in 10 seconds and it's, and it's exclusive to their band and to that song exclusively, dude. That would put a smile on my face. Uh, whether you call them bass drops, sub drops, deep bassy boys, whatever you, whatever you call them, I think they're here to stay. They're super cool. You're going to learn how to make your own now. Devin? All right, what's up, guys? Today I've got a quick tutorial for you on making sub drops, also known as bass drops. Uh, I'm going to show two ways to do this. The first way is using a stock plugin in Cubase called Test Generator. That's uh, just a basic sine wave generator. And then the other way is using the JST plugin called Sub Destroyer. For those of you who don't know, JST is Joey Sturgis Tones. All right, so here's, uh, here's what we're working with. For this example, we're going to want to put a bass drop on bar 5. So using the Cubase stock plugin, here is test generator. I'm going to unmute this for a second. You hear that's kind of annoying. Uh, that's why I have it muted and I don't want to leave it on. For most bass drops and sub drops, you'll want to utilize a sine wave here. But because a lot of this may be being viewed on YouTube, I think it'd be best to use a triangle wave. That way you can hear it better. So really all we're going to worry about in this is the frequency and the bypass. What I mean by that is I have automation turned on. I have a bypass loaded up and I have the frequency loaded up. In Cubase, you can come in here, load up the test generator and you can see frequency and bypass. These are the two that I have loaded up. So for bypass, we basically just want to tell Cubase when to turn on the test generator. So between bar five and bar seven, by doing this, I'm letting it know only between here and here is this plugin, plugin gonna turn on. And then for the second automation, I have the frequency loaded up. Our first automation point will be the starting frequency. Uh, you can play around with this, just see what sounds good, set it higher, set it lower, play it back a hundred times until it sounds good in your mix. Uh, or if you know you're playing a breakdown in drop C, for example, you can look up well, what frequency is C in those lower octaves. In this case, it's 65 hertz. So for this example, let's go ahead and start at 65 hertz. And then we'll end it here on 7. And same thing, play around until it sounds good. For this sample, we'll go ahead and use 40. All right, so now we've got our bypass set to when it needs to turn on, and we've got our frequency set to what range we're going to be utilizing. Now, as long as the automation is reading, when I play this back, it should play exactly what we want it to do. Cool, that sounded pretty good for a, for a start. So that's one way to do it. From here, you could either just use or just leave the automation so it can be adjusted as necessary. Or if you would like, you can bounce this down to a wave file and then you can manipulate the wave and delete this track, do whatever you need to do. Uh, it depends on your situation. But really, that's it. So I'm going to mute that. All right, option two for generating a sub drop would be Sub Destroyer, made by Joey Sturgis Tones. In my opinion, this is the easier way. 
if we load this up and go to trigger, uh, this would be our sine wave and this is our triangle wave. Once again, I'm going to utilize the triangle wave because I'd like you to be able to hear it. You literally set your start frequency. We have it at 65. Your end frequency set to 40 again. The length of time you want the bass drop to last. In this case, it's 1300 milliseconds. And then you click the fire button. And that's really it. So to put it to use, we would arm it set it to write the automation. Now all we got to do is hit record and hit fire at the right time. Cool. Now if we remove the right automation, leave read on and play it back, we should hear what we just did. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial on building sub drops using stock plugins and Joey Sturgis Tones Sub Destroyer. So there you have it. I hope you learned something. Thank you, Devin. If you haven't already been using this technique and you can't wait to hop on your DAW and try it out yourself, share it with me. If you've made your own bass drop in your song, share it with me. I would love to hear it. And hey, if you want your music mixed by us at George Recording Studio, please contact any of the contact links in the low end. I look forward to chatting with you. Until next time, always use your blinker and change your strings.